This is going to be a beginner tutorial about how to use the C-Star app to edit our images that we captured in the C-Star. Um, maybe like me, many of you are beginners in this process of post-processing images, and it can be a bit overwhelming. And so I have been using the C-Star app now for probably about six months, and the app is really pretty good. It you can do quite a bit of editing right in the app and come out with pretty decent pictures. They're probably not going to be as good as the ones where you save thousands of exposures and stack them in serial and use PixInsight and Graxpert and all of those other software, but they're still very presentable and good images. And so I want to talk about how to use the C-Star app to edit your images and we'll go from there. So the first place we want to start is we want to open our C-Star and connect to it. So the C-Star is turned on. Mine currently is in the house. It's not outside. It's during the day when I'm recording this. So I have turned it on and connected to the C-Star. Now I have images saved on the C-Star from previous imaging sessions. And so that's what I'm going to use to show some of the features of the C-Star app and the editing tools that are there. So the first thing you want to do is once you've opened the app and you're connected to your C-Star, click on the My Album. And in there you see I only have one image saved in here that is saved. Um, when it's saved like this, this is a JPEG. And this is when you're imaging the object outside it is saving every single one of those exposures if you've set the the settings to do that but at the end of your imaging session or if you stop it for some reason it will save that image that is currently on your screen and so that saves as a jpeg file and that's this file right here now this is a stacked image because that's what the C-Star app does is it stacks every one of those exposures along the way as you're imaging outside. And so um, that's what this image is, is once I finished, this is the Trifid Nebula and it's pretty small, but see, you can zoom in, you can see it's there. This is the one we're going to use because that happens to be the only one on our C-Star right now. But we're, we're going to go back here, and that one is saved to my phone. And so that's why it's in this saved folder. If I want to access the subs folder or the exposures, I click on the C-Star. And you see I have quite a few additional ones in here that I don't have saved as JPEGs. So um, you'll see right under the stargazing album, there's an IC417, that's the Trifid Nebula. And then right next to it is the IC417 sub. And then you see there's little numbers underneath them. Under the IC417, there's only one image, and that is a duplicate of the JPEG that was in the saved folder. The next folder over that says IC417 sub, you see there's 265 files in there. And that's every one of those saved exposures. So when we're editing in the C-Star app, we don't want to edit each individual exposure because that's 265 exposures. I mean, it's you're going to have to do each one individually. That's going to take you forever to do. So we're going to use the stacked image that the C-Star produced as it was imaging. So click on that folder, IC417. And in there you see that picture and we're going to click on it. Once I click on it, I can zoom in, I can look around, I can, um, you know, zoom in and then look around at all the other stars or whatever I want to do. But we want to enhance this one. Now the... The Trifid Nebula is pretty small. It's right there in the center and it's not very big. So I want to enlarge it so that when I do some editing, I can see what it is doing and what effects those images and edits are doing to this image. 
So I've enlarged it a little bit. I don't want it like to fill the screen like this because I want it to, I want to be able to see the difference. I don't want to degrade any of the edges. I don't want to make stars turn weird colors or anything like that. So the first editing tool that we can use is this denoise tool and it's up here in the right hand top corner and it looks like a pen. I think it's a magic wand is what it's supposed to be. And so if you click on that, it goes to the AI denoise and this is artificial intelligence looks at your picture and it tries to eliminate the noise or the the parts of that image that are not good. And so as you zoom in, now you see that it looks different. It looks gassier and and that's what that denoise does. It takes away the graininess of the picture and makes it more smooth and pillowy kind of. And I, I'm not sure. I, I have a love-hate relationship with the denoise. I think it does fabulous. It's taken away a lot of that graininess that was in the background, but it also doesn't always look natural, especially if you're doing something, an object that has a lot of definition. It kind of blurs it all together and makes it a little bit fuzzy looking, in my opinion. But, you know, everybody has their own ideas of the way they like it. Once we've denoised it, though, and it's showing that picture of denoising, you see down here at the bottom, there's these little icons. There's a plus minus. This one does the brightness. See, I can brighten that and I can over brighten it. So that is way overexposed. So, you know, you want to dial that down to where it looks good. You can also darken it to the point that you can't even see it anymore. So you zoom in, you can't hardly even see it. Um, if you don't like the settings and you don't, don't know how to get back to zero or the, or the ground zero, just click that little reset button right above the slider in the right hand corner. So this one deals with the brightness. So dark on the left and bright on the right and there's varying amounts it really does help to brighten nebula especially so let's reset that one to zero and then try this next one this one is the contrast so if i i move it to the left you see it turns kind of gray and you can do it so much that the contrast makes that picture disappear well i don't really like the dark sky to look gray and so I want to go the other direction, and that makes it more black. But you see, as I go further and further to the right, it too will make the object disappear because you've darkened it out so much. And you can see that it's really affected the stars and, and degraded their quality as well. So you probably won't ever go to 100% on these, but the the key is to get it just where you want it to go so as i'm doing this one i do like the backgrounds dark but i don't want it to start disappearing the nebula so right there it's disappearing so i want to back it off just a little bit at a time until the whole nebula appears but i'm still seeing a black background so that's kind of how that contrast works and let's reset that one and then go to the next one. This one has adds color to it. So if you go to the left, it makes things more white. So you see that nebula has turned gray or white. It's removed the color. If you go the other direction, it adds more color. So you see it, it really can blow it out of proportion. But, you know, sometimes you want it to look like it has a little bit of color you're probably not going to ever do it to this and think that that's a good image. But, you know, maybe a little bit adding a little makes it look more attractive. You know, it's kind of up to everybody to decide what looks good to them. So let's go ahead and reset that one to zero again, and then we'll move to this one. This one, you can rotate the item. 
So use this little slider bar here and you can rotate that object. And I'm going to reset that, but you can also crop it. So to crop it, you just use two fingers on the screen and enlarge whatever you want to enlarge into that box. And then when you've got it to the size you want it to go to, just click one of the boxes in the bottom and it stays that size. So that's how you do the cropping and you can return it back to whatever size you want to do. So if you want it to fill the screen, make it fill the screen here and then click on one of those buttons in the bottom again to go edit some of those other changes and you can make the changes that you want to make. So there is quite a bit of flexibility in what we can do with the app itself. If you're uncomfortable or a beginner at post-processing your images, another thing that you can do is you can compare. So once you've made some adjustments up here in the top right hand corner, you can click on that button that says compare. And that shows you the original before we did any changes before the denoising or any color or contrast or anything. So that shows the difference. So all you do is click on it and let go of it and it'll return it back to the changed. So you can see that it does make quite a bit of difference. That denoising did take away a lot of that noise in the background. Uh, once you've got an image that you like, you can click this little square with the arrow in the top right hand corner. And with that, you can export it, you can download it. Um, I usually export it and save the image and that saves it to my phone's um, camera images. Um, so there's a lot you can do. I mean, if you're, if you're new and post-processing is overwhelming, this is a great place to start because you can, you can really make that image look nice and bring out its colors and its definition with just a few clicks of the button. You know, it's taken this videos maybe 10 minutes long and we've been able to make some beneficial changes to this image. So it's a, a good place to start, especially for beginners. Um, we appreciate everybody watching and participating in the channel. And we encourage you to subscribe and to like our videos and we plan on presenting more. So we're glad to have you along. Wishing everybody clear skies. Thanks for watching.